Juji's hardest counter on a land map. Well, it's a good thing we're actually on a water hybrid then, because we're hopping into four lakes. English in the hands of Puppy Paw, Beastie Cutie on the aforementioned Juji. Will it prove to be a hard counter here when you add a lot of food behind it? Let's find out, because I've got a feeling we might be looking at a Castle Age race on both sides. Remember, we are now 2-2 in this best of seven series. $150 on the line for this show match. Really big shout out to the Historic Alliance Gaming Org, who actually organized this and made it happen. They've been doing the commentary in French. Be sure to check out their channel if you understand French. Um, if you need subtitles to convert French talk, probably hang around in the English cast because we usually do them officially here. So yeah, really cool matchup though. Like there are some different dynamics to think about. Like on land, the way this always used to play out is English would build Lombos and Gigi would just fall over. But I think, you know, when you put the ponds behind it, it changes the dynamics a little bit. Maybe we see a situation where both sides rush castle. Gigi are pretty good at that. Tang Dynasty makes it a more optimal route for them because it's cheaper. And also, they produce out their docks quicker to ramp up their fishing. They have the taxman still. The only thing the English really get in this matchup on that line, that trend, is that they, of course, get slightly cheaper fishing boats. But it's only eight wood difference. I don't think it really makes up what the Zhuzhi get in return. Especially if they find a good Medigarden location. I'm wondering how much this is directed with that thought process. I never really thought Four Lakes as a great map to Meditation Garden. But it's not terrible, right? Like, I think it's a little bit of RNG to get a decent one. But for example, over here, I think you could get, what, probably eight berries, gold, and then two or three berries here, maybe. Not fantastic, not terrible, though. Uh, you could just opt for a lot of wood if you just want to double down on the, the docks. Or I think maybe, you know, sometimes you do get spawns like this. But like I said, this is not consistent, right? Compared to Holy Island, where Zhuji get uh, gets picked a lot, on Zhuji's pick there, you can quite often get two stones, two golds, and something else in range. That's not a rare occasion. This map, it definitely feels that way. Oh, should we put predictions in? I forgot to do them on previous games. Oh, did I forget to do the Give Aces giveaway? I'll do two after this one. Someone just remind me. I knew we forgot to do something. I'm going to do predictions to make up to you guys in the meantime. So we'll do a double giveaway at the end. All right, one minute. Predictions. Get them in now. Because, like, this is a very weird matchup, by the way, folks. I've seen a few players playing English on Four Lakes, but for the most, it's been reserved for more typical maps like Dry Arabia. Juji, on the other hand, basically just get picked for proper water maps. Juji feels really good on maps where you can test water directly. I very rarely see them on maps like this. So far, it's going to be a solo pond drop from both players, so perfectly mirrored up to this point. Remember that... Beastie tech up will be quicker, by the way, so he might try to make an aggressive move. And the reason his tech up will be quicker, A, it's 15% cheaper with Tang Dynasty. B, get more build speed than China and Juji. I dare you, right? It's impossible. So he might, for example, choose to put the Meditation Garden really close to home just to optimize his tech timing. And actually, to be honest, if you drop it like here, what, you get probably like 35 wood and then probably 48 food? Which isn't too bad, and you don't like waste too much time running. The other side, though, Abbey of Kings on the way. And it's going to be a nine builder workup. Hmm, that's a pretty firm investment. So, Poppy Paul is really fixated on that timing. Is this maybe to block aggressive or rather greedy meditation garden placements? Even if it was, it feels like it's going to be too slow. Yeah, I think he's looking for that target we talked about around here, right? Maybe? He's scanning around right now. You can tell BC's looking around to see what the value points are for the Medigarden. Okay, that... Is that really the best? <laughs> I don't know, man. I I'm wondering. Like, it, I mean, he's probably checked the values, but it kind of feels like <laughs> there should be better than that. Frax on the way as well. Oh my god. Wait, of course. Oh, this is cool. Like, how did I forget it? I mean, I... Wait. Spearman to begin with, but hear me out. You've got fishing. Could you not just Palace Guard flood this game? Palace Guard usually underperform. A lot of people have been critical about how bad usually Palace Guard are. Uh, usually the thought process is you can't play the long feudal. The best you can do is build a few, go castle. Because you just don't have the raw eco to do it. But on a map like Four Lakes, you have an insane amount of food, right? If you flood Palace Guard, you can just flank attack. And if the English react with men at arm spam, they'll just get kited. That's such a cool idea if that's the case. 
Looks like it's going to be a villager pool. Unlucky for Beastie, though, because Puppy Pool has already blocked off entry points here. <laughs> what? Okay, this is sick. We've got a proxy archery range play and a meditation garden blocker. And also, just to react to chat there, I did not allow bannings on words that are connectors. Things like the, to, a. Never have, never will. That's when the use of the, the banning gets dumb. Man, what a cool play, though. <laughs> Yo, is Dragovan watching? Dude, he's probably like, he's got a smile on his face. His nose is up in the air right now. He's like, I've done this first. <laughs> Proxy archer range, perfect reaction immediately to the spearman. And now the dock follow up. Dude, this is so beautiful in the flow. Puppy Paw has a protection arc for the dock drop. And Beastie now reacting with the archer ship far too slowly. Surely. It's cutting. Might actually buy him enough time here. Archer ship is about to come out. So there's usually will be protected. Villager looking like it's going to go down. Second Lombo does come out. So actually, we'll keep him alive. Unfortunately, now with the archer ship here, Puppy Paw has a bigger issue getting on the pond. Oh, man. Yeah, these are not ideal trades for Beastie. The pass guard follow-up should be capable of clearing this up. As long as you don't rush it, per se. Like, technically, the king should be here. Should. Really being the key words. But apparently, he's on a mission to scout. What? Okay, so I guess at this point, Red just goes castle then. Like, this play is over, guys. The moment you abandon with the king, this play is over. Your only option now is to rush castle. Looks like instead he's going to queue up more Lombos at home. Wait, really? Out of another archery range, right? Okay, yeah, it's got a home archery range. So, this should be to defend. This is tough now, though. Because your gold is front spawning, right? So if you get pushed off that, it's kind of GG. Because you won't even be able to build pal uh, like men at arms, right? Undermesh now being queued up. Remember, these palace guards, they have less ranged armor. So you can actually just shoot in to them pretty hard with the villagers as well. Still Tower is on the way. Feels like Red is going to be ready for that. Arch rangers are being removed. Hmm. I think Juji could potentially just go for a castle rush now. This is reminiscent of the land builds where they build a handful of palace guard to repel a move by their opponent and then they tech up into good palace guard, right? So it kind of has that same hit. And we mentioned already with the amount of food coming in, it's going to hit hard. We also have second pond now being secured on the north side. So docks are going up for the Juji. Fishing is already inflated to basically critical on the west side pond. I just don't feel like I felt the impact of this king whatsoever. You know, sometimes just having the king forces a reaction which makes it impactful. You could argue that. There was a lot of spears built. But the reality is, the, uh, the Lombos, they got kind of mopped up on the front side to make it an equal trade. Like, I would, I'd say Beastie's in a reasonable position here. Hmm. His tech up won't be much later, remember. It's cheaper, and also he techs faster. So, probably looking at a white tower drop on the Ford Gold then. Which might leave the wood slightly exposed. Hmm. Shalom Monastery now on the way. So, Juju will look to rush the relics here. And it's a pretty good spawn for it overall. Maybe the north side is the most exposed. But Lombos aren't a great answer to Shalom Monks, remember. The hardened skin allows them to just gap close. Scout also lost. Yeah, playing pretty blind game. White Tower is now going to be on the way up. And we talked about this. That it had to be towards the gold, right? That does, however, leave your wood lines more exposed. And because your opponent's teching up as well, has already teched up ahead of you. I mean, we could just see stables drop now, right? Like, it doesn't even need to be palace guard per se. 
It depends which approach he wants to take. Like, do you want to take a raiding approach or an all-in approach? Lancers are more raid-oriented, and it controls the map to allow for relics. Looks more like what we're seeing coming out from the GG here is an all-in towards the enemy base to block their tech up and also force all troops to defend. And this could be a big blocker. Pass guard already castled up. Puppy Paw in trouble. Uh, you can't mess around with this. It's either a fast tech up or it's dead. He actually might just be dead. Level 2 ranged armor being researched. Beastie looking like he's done it here. I, I just don't think he has enough to repel this right now. More coming. Lombos are pulling back to try and repel it. PG are going to leak through onto the tree line. But that white tower has seen no progress for the last 20 seconds. It needs to happen now. A click not working out for the Juji here. Needs to die faster. Lombos are now in position for the body blocker. Once again, he dives on in. He still lays a hurting, guys. Real bad. English. Need that tech. White tower now complete. But this will be a crossbow defense. I don't think you can match knights now. Because your opponent, like, he's going to be everywhere too quick. Like, I feel like you have to have crossbows to stop this first before you flood in the cav. It doesn't feel great, but, like, realistically, the alternative is, for you know, your opponent already has two stables pumping lances behind this. Which is realistic at this point in the game with this much fishing. Just dead, though. It's going to be Hoover up of Relics. Two already on the way home. Three more still to be contested. What now? Wait. Is there a world in which the English just go for Imperial? It's starting to look like it. So the Canadian got up, looked at this game, and he was type, about to type GG, but then he was like, wait a second. What if Imp Rush... What if we just do it with Wingard and rush out troops? That would be vile. Because remember, if you do Wingard, you don't need gold for elite statuses. They're already all elite units, right? For the most, right? If you go Wingard Raiders, you go Wingard Rangers, they're already there. My Tower should be able to protect you. Like, Palace Guard will not be capable of diving this yet. This is wild. Poppy Paul's doing it. He's rushing Imperial Age. <laughs> this is so unexpected. On the other side of it, just think about what's happening for Mr. Cutie here. He's hoovering up all the relics. He's feeling good about the game. He's logging the sacred sites. Probably expecting a reaction. Instead, there will be no reaction in this age. Puppy Paul goes for a bypass. All right, guys, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. For all of those that have had a boiling hate inside you, Reddit warriors that have been making threads about the English, molding about it for days, for weeks, for months, this is your moment. <laughs> if this works, this is the evidence you all submit in your reports. Wingard Palace now on the way. Either an act of derpiness or an act of glory. What is it they say? Everything's stupid unless it works, and then it's genius. Puppy boy, he's got his scientist coat on. He's slapped on his glasses. He said something in Japanese that I need subtitles to understand. And he's activated. Super anime mode. Wingard Palace now online. And it is going to be the Wingard Rush. Wingard Raid is queued up. This is so damn smart. He still has to pay for the upgrades, guys. But the reality is he's getting a very quick pump into Knights up against Mass Palace Guard. That is a counter. Basically, you should know what this is. Like, there's no way you'd Barkshire here, right? Like, Barkshiring is just a way you lose. Because, like, great, you're Imp, but you don't do anything on the map. So then BC will just go chill. He'll go Imp. He'll be fine. Okay, people saying that Raiders are F-tier. No, 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 no. Dude, you have no standing army. If any of you are queuing up Rangers, Footmen, and whatever, you're dead. Like, how how can you have zero army and have gone Wingard from this far behind and build anything but Raiders? Like, you need numbers, man. This is like your Yorushiro drop in Imp. 25 seconds to get three Knights and three Horsemen. You have a White Tower? Dude, that's like double racks. Your opponent has 23 pass guard already. You need more troops. You just need bulk, man. 
He could realistically be producing out of this as well. I'd agree with that. But you just need units. And up against Palace Guard, this actually is the perfect unit. Right in. Maybe a little bit too soon for the fight, though. Numbers aren't exactly in his favor, but the quality is. And also, the fixation on the villager might be a problem for Beastie. Wait. Oh, no. Be Puppy Paul. He screwed up here. He's going to rush for a gate to get out, but it might be too late. Behind this Yuji library now on the way. Puppy Paul is going to mop up the first wave of pass guard, but he needs to move now. Wingard Raider Rush. Got to go fast or go home. You can't play this like England in the quarterfinal. No chilling around. You just need to go fast. You need to score hard. Can he do this? Sacred Sight timers are still ticking down. He walls in the rest of the fret. <laughs> you guys are only a problem if I let you out. Oh, no. Another villager down. 14 eco lead now for Beastie. We got Raiders are going to show up. Villagers are exposed on the front line, so there's actually a good thing that he's drawing the fight towards this. Problematic, though, because remember, right now, he's defending with his Raiders. He needs to attack. That is a lot of calf. That's kind of wild, right? Like, already up to 16 calf and scaling. Who wants to crap talk my Raiders? I'm telling you, this thing is nuts. Problem is, now it has a counter coming. Beastie, massing spears. So Puppy Paw now needs to transition. Rangers, I agree, would be really giga brain here. Does require gold, does require a lot of food, and you are food, uh, and you, you know, I would rather, and you are food focused. So maybe like, just start prepping racks, men at arms alongside it. Another issue is walls are coming up. Now, luckily for Puppy Paw, they are only wood walls. BC's being a bit frugal about this. No stone walls. I'm going to raid in. Beastie. Trying to find the right position to fight in. I mean, realistically, if Puppy Paw just breaks and goes in two directions, this could prove problematic for the Serb. Instead, Puppy Paw routes the whole army around to the north side. He's going to peel some for the south to go for the decap. Only one spimming going here. He might be elite, but against six cavalry units, I can't help but feel that's setting a guy up to fail. More troops are on the way to assist. And he goes to the docks. Okay, so plan revealed. And behind this, Puppy Paw now prepping the footman. He's happy with what he's seen. Interesting choice. I feel like people don't often go rangers here. The concern is probably like Nesta Bees would just counter mass rangers anyway. So you'd rather have a bulky frontline that can go in, right? I like to think of rangers as a specialist unit and footman as an all-rounder. 12 knights are now raiding in though. Textiles at least there, so it should minimize the losses. But there should be some. Puppy Paul can't hang around too long though. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna like flag this right now, because I I this is a classic example of what I highlight a lot with Juji. This Juji library, you see it time and time again. What was the point? If he had the Temple of the Sun, he could have chased this down much cleaner. Great pinch in the choke point though. We'll mop up most of the crew. Puppy Paul looks like the rest is gonna be finished off here. No easy way of getting out. A few will escape to tell the tale, but the rest have been murdered. Meanwhile, a blocker on the keep drop over on the west side. Beastie! He lost so many villagers here. Look at the count. The distraction worked out. The elite night pump came in just in time there. Villagers still routing out to try and complete the keep. Not sure they're ever going to get to, though. New wave of pass guard coming in to reclaim the area, but definitely came at a high price. We were so distracted by the die, we didn't see the rest, but it doesn't matter because BC's the best. Gets the win, now leads the set, and finds himself on the verge of victory in this show match. Wow. No time to get the footman, no time to recover. The Raiders simply not able to do enough damage and stay alive means BC now leads this insanely close set.